Shalom. Kahlaila Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rukakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, Distress of Nations. I want to read this real quick, and then we're going to play the video. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. So we're going to go ahead and play the video. Let's continue. Okay, so some breaking news in regards to the Middle East. Uh, USS Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group 3, ballistic missile defense capable cruisers, destroyers, and an entire fighter squadron have been ordered to deploy to the Middle East as a contingency in case anything could possibly go on between Iran and Israel. Now, obviously, this past week has been a little crazy. There's been some strikes happening all over the place and things have been escalating. So that is going on. That's That was just ordered by the Secretary of Defense. In addition to that, a whole bunch of airlines have canceled their flight to Israel. Over the past few days, Air India, Germany's Lufthansa Group, and U.S. carriers, U.S. United Airlines, and Delta, and Italy's ITA Airways said they had suspended flights to Tel Aviv. Airlines this week have also been canceling and delaying flights to the Lebanese capital, Beirut, after the strike that happened there. Canada even issued a, a notice to Canadian aircraft to avoid Lebanese airspace for at least a month due to the risk to aviation from military activity. Additionally, there's been a new joint resolution, Joint Resolution 106, which was a resolution to authorize the use of the United States Armed Forces against the Islamic Republic of Iran for threatening the national security of the United States through the development of nuclear weapons. It was introduced by Senator Lindsey Graham on July 31st. And you read the entire thing, it's online. It's like, to authorize the use of the United States Armed Forces against the Islam Islamic Re Republic of Iran for threatening the national security of the United States through the development of nuclear weapons. And it just like says, whereas for everything. You can read it, it's crazy. In any case, there's a lot going on and this is definitely a developing situation okay so the bottom line is the stress of nations and things are heating up and gradually gradually escalating towards all-out hell taking place on earth that's what we're witnessing real time so I want to I want to go directly to the scriptures and not waste any time so we're living in some very, very exciting times. Let's go here to the book of Habakkuk 2, verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. So the Lord has watchmen on the earth right now. He has set up a watchtower standing upon the walls of Jerusalem, warning the elect. Let's go to verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. Whenever we heard the Bible for the first time, we ran away from it, old English, and it put us to sleep. But now that it's being interpreted, now the sausage is being made and ready, prepared as a meal. So now we're seeing 
the meal prepared in its finished product. If you've ever looked at a meal being prepared, raw beef, grounded beef, it's disgusting. And it's a turnoff. But what we're seeing is a processed finished product, a meal being prepared. Is it not written, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies? So now the elect is being allured in the wilderness or the land of our captivities. Let's read this again. <clears throat> I'll begin two, verse two. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. So this table is likened unto a meal that is alluring the Lord's anointed ones. So it's being broken down, interpreted. Let's go to verse three. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So now we can clearly see how everything comes together. The digital grid is going to be knocked out or fried. So they're going to need a secure network. They're going to need digital implantable devices subdermally underneath the surface of the skin to identify who's friendly and who's a foe or adversary. Famine is going to usher in a more desperate need to eat. So everything is making sense now because it's being broken down or processed into a finished product, a meal being prepared. These tables are the Bibles, the books of the Bible. Matter of fact, let's go here. Talk about that famine <laughs> and hard times. Let's go to uh, 2 Ezra 16. 2 Ezra 16. So Yahweh Shai spoke about this in Matthew 24. The book of 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 17. Woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Ezra is back teaching. So he saw a vision in the future. And he was given a 360 degree periphery to see the events unfolding around the world. Turmoil, wars being brewed up, bloodshed, civil wars. So he's back. Woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. Jacob's trouble. So this is the final event. <clears throat> the beginning of sorrows and great mornings. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do? when these evils shall come. How can I eat, Lord? How do I escape persecution from UN troops and house raids from vigilantes? Total lawlessness. So this CHIP is going to be implemented at the precise moment in time where there are grave scarcities in the supply chain the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? So the Lord is visiting the earth with amendments, scourges, corrections, reproof. 
Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Got ahead of myself. So the Lord, the Lord brings poverty. The Lord brings death, sickness, disease. The Lord is stirring the pot. But he has a special hedge of protection around his elect, like Ezra. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Looking at it like it's just happenstance. These things are just happening by coincidence or just some unforeseen circumstances. There's no such thing as an unforeseen circumstances. We're not the prophets called seers that can foresee. Yes. So now things are being made plain to us, clear. The looking glass or the window is being wiped more transparent. Let's read this again. Habakkuk 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. At the end it shall speak. So Jacob is the beginning. Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. <clears throat> Where is this at here? I think it's Romans 16. Let's see. So that means that the leaders would be here. To herald the returning or the second return of Yahawashai. Right here, somewhere in here. Let's see, one moment. Yeah, let's do it this way. Yeah, okay, Romans 10 and 18. The book of Romans, chapter 10. Let's go to verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the elect already have the gift of faith, but it has to be nurtured, watered, or cultivated by preachers, which are like planters, gardeners, tilling the Lord's vineyard, waking up the elect. Let's go to verse 18. Romans 10 and 18. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went unto all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. So YouTube is doing the heavy lifting. Ultimately, the internet is helping to pass the message, pass the word. We don't have to put on a backpack and go do some hiking up Mount Everest and screaming to the top of our lungs. Are you out of your mind? So the, the internet is do, doing the heavy lifting. The World Wide Web. So now we can see things plainly. Uproars in Venezuela. Uproars in Nigeria. And Niger. Niger is kicking out U.S. troops telling them to go home. Venezuela is right on the brink or the cusp of civil war. The UK have uproars right now. And they're accusing these migrants of the Islamic faith of unaliving three little girls. When in reality, it was a little black boy or so-called black boy that was a Catholic. But it's, this thing has turned into a 
racial propaganda machine to stir up strife, tension, confusion, which is all by design, order out of chaos, the elite's motto, international elite. So now, what's happening in the UK, anything the color of a paper bag or darker is being dragged out of vehicles and assaulted, afflicted, persecuted. That's coming to America. Second Ezra 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee, before, we, you ever heard a newspaper called the New York Times or the Chicago Times? So we measure the times based on events that are tied to Bible prophecy. That's how we measure the times. By the sequencing of events. Then, see, then. So it's based on the backdrop of the word. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So we are seeing signs based on how do we know the most high? Well, we, we know the answer to this already. How do we know that he is visiting the world in which he made. Let's go to Psalms 9. <clears throat> we got to take our time. Psalms 9, verse 12. Let's go to 11. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. So his ministers declare his works all through the doctrine. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. So the elect is likened unto a damsel in distress that have a clean heart towards him, sincere and have integrity. Verse 13. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death. Spirit made me read that because I wanted to go straight here to 16. So King David just talked about being lifted up. Let's read that again. Remember, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the Lord's church or congregation. He told Peter that. Let's read that again. I really wanted to go to 16. <coughs> Psalms 9 verse let's go back to uh, 13. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that lifted me up from the gates of death. Ultimately, that death is going to come by fire. But it starts with skirmishes, civil breakdown, societal collapse, economic friction, and utter, utter collapse. Economic, societal breakdowns. Let's go to the key point. How was the Lord known? Psalms 9 and 16. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared into the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. So these nations are going to be judged by fire. And the residue of them 
are going to be salvaged for servitude, slaves under the house of David. So he's known by his judgments. That's how we know the God of the Bible is real because of prophecy. Go back to that. <clears throat> See, Second Ezra 9, verse 2. Then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Earthquakes, sicknesses, judgments, massive death. See, right here. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. So Yahweh Shai was quoting these scriptures in um, Matthew chapter 24. So we're seeing the face of righteous judgment go forth. This is how the Most High makes his presence known. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So the Most High is showing the left-hand side of his majesty, righteous indignation through his judgments. See, let's go here. Isaiah 46. The book of Isaiah chapter 46. Let's go to verse 8. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. So the Lord's men are made known through due diligence, integrity, sincerity, truth. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. So how do we know the Most High? Remember now, we read it in Psalms 9 and 16. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So the breakdown of the society of Edom, moral decline, economic collapse, societal breakdowns is all done by the Lord. The Sihib is his tool of chastisement and the trial of the test of our faith, the might be. He is orchestrating these series and sequences of events. Let's go back to 2 Ezra 9 and 4. Then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. We just read that in Isaiah 46. So this is how we get a small glimpse into his all, into his omniscience and his all power, omnipotence as well. He knows all, sees all, and has jurisdiction or judgment over the earth. He is the king of the earth. But like us all, that is made in the world. Say what? For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end. And the end 
is manifest. So that means the birth of Jacob is coming through the womb, which is a metaphor for being born into prominence, the rulership, nobility, and the death of old men sleazy eat. The old world is passing away. Reminds me of Luke 16, by the way. And I'm going to go into Luke today. The Spirit had me do that because I'm more comfortable going into Matthew. The Spirit is like, look, you need to go into Luke today. So, yes, sir. Let's go here. So this place is going to end with nuclear fire. Second address, 16. That's when they make this digital device mandatory worldwide. <clears throat> But the judgment of fire starts in the daughter of Babylon. Second Ezra 16. See, verse 12. The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with waves from the deep. And the waves of it are troubled. And the fish thereof also before the Lord. And before the glory of his power. That's Yahweh Shai coming back with all power, signs, and glory. So he's coming back in the midst of a world that is in total chaos and confusion and infighting. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumed the foundation of the earth. Nuclear exchange is taking place here, is what we're reading about. There's going to be a nuclear confrontation or exchange. Like as an arrow, it, even unto this day, nuclear warheads or nuclear missiles are called arrows. Like as an, verse 16, like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? The deliverer will, Yahweh, the son of the most high, the Hamashiach that's going to save a damsel in distress. Speaking of a damsel in distress, let's go to Luke 21. In a moment, I need to take a drink. We're going to go to Luke 21. Let's read this first. The book of Luke chapter 21. Or does it say the return of Yahweh Shai? Right here. Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. When you see that the sea and the waves roaring, Whenever a nuclear missile impacts the Earth's surface, it creates a man-made tsunami effect where the sea and the ocean shores begin to come upon the land and, and starts flooding. So it's very terrifying. So you got fire and earthquakes from these missiles on the landmass, and then you have Man-made tsunami effects flooding the landmass. Total, utter terror and destruction. The Lord is not to be played with. Luke 21. Why you think Habakkuk chapter 3? Was thou angry with the seas? Was thou angry with the seas? Habakkuk is back. He's teaching. Luke 21 and 25. 
and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring let's address this distress of nations that includes the lord's elect that's a nation in itself see right here let's go to psalms 118 Book of Psalms, chapter 118. Let's go to verse 4. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endure forever. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. So the deliverance is going to come at the onslaught or the siege upon the Lord's elect, Jerusalem. They're going to make the sea hit mandatory. They're going to cast those that are non-compliant into prison. And they're going to come upon the remnant with great force. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endure forever. So the sun and the moon and the stars will always be as long as Israel is exists and vice versa. So there's no eliminating the Lord's heritage, Israel. <clears throat> I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The chariot of Shai is a large place. It looked like a rock to Ezra. So he is the rock of our salvation. Shai. Let's go back, close out. The Spirit made me go into Luke because I'm too comfortable standing in Matthew. Luke 21, notice the title here, The Return of Hamashiach. Luke 21 and 25, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring. Don't be surprised if we see a blood moon. Okay? Well, we've already seen these signs. Everything is a buildup, but things are going to intensify as we near the great and terrible day of the Lord. Who knows? We may even see another, another wonderful or marvelous work in the skies. And these stars, where's that at here? Lesser illuminaries, the Illuminati so-called, or light bearers. They're even being distressed because the thrones of their dominions are being cast down. Let's go to verse 26. Luke 21 and 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The lesser illuminaries, they're being shook up, not only with fear, but that's going to happen literally at the return of our Lord. Just like when he descended upon Mount Sinai, the earth shook because of his power and majesty. So this is both. It's two ways. They're going to be shook up or shaken with terror and fear. And he is literally going to shake the foundations of the earth. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud 
with power and great glory. He set me in a large place. The great fathership commandeered or commanded by Yahawashai. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Beautiful. Let's go back. That's deliverance. That's salvation. The elect of Israel being caught up into the skies, into the cloud. Psalms 118, verse 5. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Deliverance, salvation. Being caught up into the chariot of the Lord. The Lord, Psalms 118, verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me? So we're not worried about UN troops, Gurkha troops, the civil civil mercenaries, civil unrest, societal collapse, economic breakdowns, warlords being established, turf wars. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. Psalms 118 and 7. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. So judgment is going to be seen of our enemies. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. So when famine takes place, we're going to trust in the Lord. When fires are erupting upon the land, we're going to trust in the Lord. When disease outbreaks become rampant, we're going to trust in the Lord. Bloodshed in the streets, major judgments taking place nationwide and internationally we're going to trust in yahweh bahashem this is some breaking Yahawah news parts to the middle east uh, hopefully this lesson has been edifying see you on the next lesson lord willing all praises to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem or kwan kadash mom yasharala and abad baba we got next lord willing baraka thumb shalom